Hey guys, this is my video now talking about the five best episodes of Supernatural Season 2. There's a lot to go through, so there's going to be a lot of honorable mentions. If you watched my five worst episodes of Season 2, you saw that I struggled because there really isn't any bad episodes in this season. There is a ton of good ones, and that's why there's a lot of honorable mentions in this. They are really good. They're not in the top five good, but they're still pretty damn decent. If there was a top ten, I could almost make a top ten. Starting off with our first honorable mention is Hollywood Babylon. Funny enough, is essentially what the show has become now. This whole episode was the first time that the show really dipped into dipped into this meta sort of idea within itself, rather than the meta-ness of horror. It makes fun of producers and directors of the show by naming them and he's making these caricatures of themselves. They even have lines that producers actually said to Kripke that are just completely ridiculous like why does it have to be so dark which is funny enough because that's exactly what's happened to the show now. I don't understand how people can watch this episode and then go and watch an episode from season 15 and be like the joke became real! Other than that, this episode's also very, very funny. It's got some great humor. It also has a pretty decent insight into film and film production in general, so it's kind of cool to see that. And for me, now having worked in the industry for a few years, I can get these jokes, and there's a lot of stuff that actually makes a lot more sense to me now. And also the dolly shot of them coming in between the North Shore Studio 4 and 6, or six and four I think was really really well done. Next honorable mention is Tall Tales. This is the funniest episode of this season and while it's not up in the top five like Hell House was for season one, this episode still stands as one of the funniest episodes in the show's history as well as it also is in the introduction of the trickster who would become a very important character for the next few seasons and should have stayed at season five but we all know it fucking happen there. The Trickster is a really great character played by Richard Spike Jr. We see these really funny sort of I don't care about the world but I care about creating chaos sort of ideas and the he said you said sort of storylines going back and forth between Sam and Dean with them joking and tricking with each other where really the Trickster's playing all around and Bobby kind of just wanting to smack them all in the head. It's a really funny episode. It's one of the funniest episodes of the show. It's the funniest episode of this season and that's why it's an honorable mention. The next honorable mention is Bloodlust. I like this episode a lot because of Gordon Walker. Gordon Walker is one of the best, if not the best, human villain character that the brothers ever came across in this entire show. Expertly played by Sterling K. Brown, I've always really enjoyed how he portrayed this character because Gordon is essentially a hunter that was just so fueled by vengeance, revenge, and rage that eventually he became as less of a human as the monsters that he's fighting, the, the monsters that he's hunting. The dynamic between him and Dean at first kind of reconciling with each other, Dean sort of finding a replacement father figure almost in Gordon until they realize just what kind of person Gordon is, turns the episode around and it makes for some great, great tension between the two, which would become a repeating aspect of the show later on. And while I'm upset that he's not in as many episodes as I would have liked, it actually helps to make his villain that much more memorable with him being only in such a few episodes but having made such an impact and being such an imposing force on the brothers. It's not the worst thing to have him not in a lot of episodes. Finally, the last, last honorable mention I have to mention is Heart. I want this one to be in the top five so badly, but I can't justify it. But I love me the drama. This is probably the best romantic, if you want to call it that, episode in this entire show. It is all because of Madison. Madison is this great one-off character who develops this relationship with Sam. Sam finally gets a chance at rekindling something because he's just been holding on to Jess for so long and we get to see him be happy. We see them attempt to try and save Madison and you think that they almost do. There's this great sub arc with the whole werewolf thing which was again ruined, ruined, ruined with this cure MacGuffin bullshit that Andrew Dabb introduced later on in the show. I love Hart even with the garbage that's been further imposed in it. It's just some fantastic, sappy drama. Just, it, it's like watching a Grey's Anatomy episode, and while I think that stuff's trash, it's, it's just, 
I just eat it up. And that's exactly what I did with this episode. I love Heart from beginning to end, and I love how it ends. It almost makes me teary when I watch it. So goddamn good. All right, so now that we have the honorable mentions out of the way, let's get started with number five, also being a drama episode, what is and what should never be. What is and what should never be is essentially a better version of Heart in terms of a drama focused, character focused episode. This is one of the first very major single brother episodes in terms of this follows Dean. It's a very heavy Dean episode. Sure, Sam's there, but it's alternate Sam. It's this alternate reality Sam. In this episode, Dean gets captured by Jen, and he's given another life. He's given a view, a illusion of what would have happened if his father had never got them into hunting and if their mother had never died. What would have happened with their lives? Would Dean have become a car mechanic? Sam would have become successful and married Jess? There's all these what if, what could have been things. And while Dean is happy to be in this world, he realizes that all the people that they saved are not alive anymore. All the monsters that they killed are still out there hurting other people. And there's this great moment where Dean is co having a conversation with the tombstone of his father and he says, why does it have to be us? Why can't we be happy? Why is there always something to prevent us from having a good life? And it's a pretty true statement. It's something that has been prevalent throughout the entire show. Whether it's gone in a good direction or not, this is a prevalent occurrence. This is a prevalent presence in the show that the brothers never find happiness. They are always striving for it. They're always going for what makes the world better above themselves, even if they kind of cause the world to almost end several times. So that's why that episode's number five. And then jumping all the way back to the beginning of the season, number four on the list is In My Time of Dying. This is a fantastic season opener, and it should be held as probably the best season opener that this show ever had. I don't even know if we're ever going to beat this. The only episode that I think that might come close is either going to be season four's opener or season five's opener. But this episode picks up right after the car crash happened. Sam's able to basically pay chicken with a demon and the demon leaves. They go to the hospital. Dean's in a coma. Doesn't realize it. He's running around the hospital until he finds out that he's kind of a ghost but kind of a wayward spirit. So he's trying to help Sam help him but also at the same time he's after this creature that's in the hospital until he finds out that it's actually a reaper and the reaper talks to him and tells him about the lore and it talks about the history of these ghosts and these ghouls and it essentially just says that these are people who refuse to move. And random battery change led to me filming the rest of this the following morning. Dean is going through as he's realizing that everything that they've hunted in terms of ghouls and ghosts and spirits are actually people who have refused to cross over. They have stayed, whether for selfish reasons or for selfless reasons, they've all been driven mad. And it really plays into this humanity sort of factor, into the things that they've been hunting and it makes him second guess everything that he's been going after. All the while, John is trying to figure out how to save his son, and in the end, he realizes the only way that he can do it is by, in fact, making a deal with Yellow Eyes and giving him the cult at the same time. It's a massive sacrifice, and it punches you right in the gut considering they did all of this work to try and save their dad. They did all of this work to find him and to take on Yellow Eyes, and now he's dead. And now it's up to them to finish what their dad started. And that's how the episode ends. And it's a fantastic season opener, and I don't think they've ever beaten it in terms of just the amount of a gut punch that it gives you, as well as just a fantastic ride throughout the whole episode. So that's why In My Time of Dying is number four. Number three is actually, was actually my favorite episode of the season for a long time, and it's Croatoan, because I love the idea of a virus slash demon virus kind of mixed together. And also it uses this whole starting in the middle, then coming back to the beginning of the episode via Sam's nightmares. And this is a trope that would eventually be quite overused in supernatural history, but it worked really well with this episode. It gave a lot of tension. It gave a lot of <gasps> intrigue already into the episode. And as you go through, and as you start to figure out that Fort Langley, that's essentially where they shot it, is starting to be infected with all of these crazy demon 
hunting people. It's kind of like the crazies almost, except without the whole face degeneration and the eyeballs and whatnot. There's a really cool scene where Dean has to like pull the car away to get away from the, uh, the people who are trying to prevent them from leaving the town. Sam, they think, then gets infected by one of the uh, girls who is infected by the virus. There's a point where they're like, okay, you guys all go. I'm staying here with my brother. I'm waiting to see. This is a moment of morality between the two where they realize that they can't live without each other and they can't continue without each other. And once again, it's a little bit of a crumb, a breadcrumb trail towards what would happen with the finale of season two. It's got great action. It's got a great, cool kind of urban legend behind it with the whole Croatoan thing. And it also ends on a complete cliffhanger with the demon then being maybe Meg or whoever, but talking to uh, the yellow eyes. And that's why it's number three. Number two is All Hell Breaks Loose Part Two. This is a fantastic season finale. It's not as good as Devil's Trap from season one, but that's a hard, hard, plate to beat and this one does come close the only thing that's holding it back is the lack of development for Jake other than that though we have a fantastic moment with Dean where he's grieving for his brother and he's talking about their past and he's saying I was supposed to protect you and what am I supposed to do and there's that part where he gets up and just screams it <laughs> What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? It's such a fantastic piece of acting by Jensen and then that hard cut to him getting in the car and driving off, making the deal that would then set up the entirety of season three, bringing Sam back. And this fantastic standoff in the graveyard with the Devil's Gate being open, Sam blowing away Jake, and then their father literally rising from the pit to help save his sons. And that gives Dean the opportunity to shoot Yellow Eyes in the head. It's a great finale to the battle against Yellow Eyes, and it perfectly sets up the stakes and the craziness that's gonna happen in the following seasons. I'll be honest, if the show had just randomly ended its season two, I wouldn't have been upset as I would have for other seasons. I think that you can actually almost say that this ends without ending. I'm more so pointing out just how well this episode ended and how the tale with the yellow eyes and the revenge against him came to such a good conclusion. So that's why it's number two. And then number one is the episode that is probably the most influential and the best episode to have someone watch an episode of Supernatural if they've never seen it before is Crossroad Blues. It takes the urban legend and gives it its own spin that works perfectly within the universe of Supernatural. We are introduced to hellhounds, still scary even if the show has tried its best to make them not scary. It introduced the aspect of what would happen later on in season two. It was the catalyst essentially for what would become the entire plight of the brothers after this episode. In my entire time of watching this show, and as far as I can remember, this is the episode that I would say is key. This is the episode that everyone should watch. It is quintessential supernatural TV filmmaking. It has a fantastic story. It has a fantastic kind of cool little hidden mystery to it. It has a fantastic interaction with a demon. It also introduced hellhounds and they still scare the absolute shit out of me. It's a perfect episode and it was a perfect recommendation for anyone to watch Supernatural. It's literally the best episode they ever made in terms of nailing every single component of the show's aspects into one hands down. And that's my list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry for the change. Battery ran out, changed over. I probably look a little bit like death. I woke up and I've got uh, allergy eyes going on. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Give me your guys' thoughts on what you think are the five best episodes of Supernatural. Put those in the comments below. Anyways, that's all from me. I'll see you guys next time.